Welcome to Pivot and Thrive. I'm Karen McCarthy, host of the Pivot and Thrive community for small business owners. We come together to make better informed decisions about running a business and leverage growth opportunities through collaboration. We're recording today on Abenaki land. We'll have the opportunity for a brief Q&A at the end, so feel free to populate your questions throughout the call and we'll address them before we close. I'm so excited to introduce Deshay Peacock. Deshay is a home author and lifestyle design small business coach. She's worked with hundreds of multi-passionate entrepreneurs to help them make more money doing work they love. Deshay, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Karin. This is so fun to be here. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna make you the host. You can, awesome. I'll pass the baton. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. It's good to see some familiar faces here. Oh, somebody else is in. Can I, I'll just admit them. Um, and I am I'm coming from vacation here and uh, I'm in Connecticut and there's a beautiful beach in front of me. And um, I sent my, my, my family out to go and play. So I'm really excited to be here with you focus in. Um, this is a topic that I'm really passionate about because it's, you know, it's been a struggle for me to figure out how to brand my business, having multiple passions. Um, and so it's something that I've worked through and kind of figured out, I figured it out for myself. And that's what I help my clients with. So I'm super excited to help you guys with this today. And I want to start off by saying like, even though in some of my marketing, I'm like, if you refuse to niche down, you know, here's the answer. And then some of my clients who do have one thing are like, do you, do you think it's like terrible that I have one thing? Like, and I'm like, no, it's totally fine to have one thing. If you have one thing, that's awesome too. But for those of us who have lots of things going on and, and, and we feel like that's part of who we are, I think that if we get to create a business that we love, like, let's see how we can do it and make it feel like us. Right. So Thank you guys for showing up. Thanks for taking the time. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're going to go into presentation mode here and uh, we're going to hope that this works. I always get a little nervous with this and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to see if I can shrink my, see now I can't find it. Where do I shrink people? <laughs> oh, here it is there. So I can actually see what I'm, see what I'm doing now. Karin, you can hear me. Okay. And everything. Yes, you sound and, perfect. Um, okay, great. And you can great. see my screen. Yes. Okay. All right. So great. Here we go. How to create an umbrella brand. And yes, this is for multi-passionate entrepreneurs um, who refuse to niche. And again, if you, you know, if you don't want to niche, that's okay too. Hopefully this will be helpful for you. So again, my name is Deshea Peacock and uh, my brand is called Sweet Spot Style. So let's talk about what you're going to learn today. I'm going to kind of go fast, but if you, I'd love for you to interact in the chat and Karin, I'd love for you just to interrupt me if, um, if there's any insight or somebody wants to share an example or something something like that, just feel sure. free to stop me. But, um, you know, like this is something I could talk about all day and we have an hour. So I'm just going to try to hammer through because I really want to talk to you guys at the end. But again, feel free to interrupt, Karin. So what you're going to learn today, why it's okay not to niche because we have really been told we should. Two things that you need to create to make an umbrella brand. And I'll explain what that is in a minute and I'll give you some examples. And what that looks like if you refuse to niche what that looks like. So again, those are some examples. And will this concept of an umbrella brand work for you? Because it doesn't work for everybody. So let's see if it's going to work for you. So of course, you've seen this message before in this type of trainings, but please, you know, close off all your tabs and, um, you know, get rid of any distractions and just like, let's be here together. Um, and then let me see, somebody else wants to enter. Hold on. I can't. Whoops. I'm trying to move my screen so I can admit them <laughs> there. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So as multi-passionate entrepreneurs, you know, your strength is also probably your biggest challenge. So I don't know if you're like me, tell me in the chat, but you probably, I'm guessing you probably don't have trouble coming up with your ideas. It's just harder to implement them all. Let me know in the chat if this is you, like, do you have a problem coming up with ideas or a problem with having too many ideas? So today I'm going to show you how I've been able to move on my big ideas, because that's the thing. If you have a bunch of ideas, sometimes it's hard to like implement them and get through them. Right. So I'm going to share how I've gotten um, in touch and like make, take an action on my big ideas by creating multiple streams of income under one umbrella brand. That sound good. Okay. So let me just explain a little bit of background. So you kind of, um, 
hear where I'm coming from and why this has worked for me. So about seven years ago, I quit my job and I invented my own gig as a multi-passionate virtual entrepreneur. And in that time, I published two books and you'll see that these are home decor books. And that falls under my umbrella brand. And I've led nine retreats to San Miguel de Allende. It's a place I love. And I've coached hundreds of women on their journey to create the lifestyle and the business they dream of. So you can see that I wanted to share those examples of some of my streams of income so that you see um, that it is possible to do multiple streams of income under one brand. Um, so then the question is, because we've been told that we can't succeed. I mean, I don't know about you. Maybe it's me. Maybe, maybe because I follow a lot of coaches and take a lot of webinars and I'm always trying to learn in the online market. Maybe I'm targeted, but I'm constantly getting the message from marketers that you should pick one thing and that you should narrow in. And if you can't, then you won't be successful. So I just want to be straight up with this. Can you make money doing more than one thing? And the answer is yes, absolutely you can. And in fact, I'm on track to make nearly four times what I did in my job. So to me, I'm like, okay, that's an indicator that yes, you can be successful doing more than one thing. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And even though I do have a lot going on in my business, I don't want you to think that just because I do more than one thing that that's all I do is business. It's really important to me. You know, that's why in my title, I'm a lifestyle and business coach, because I believe that, you know, if we're creating a business, we might as well create one that we love, right? One that brings us joy and happiness. And of course, one thing that I really um, value is my family and, and international travel outside of COVID and that kind of thing. So it is possible to do more than one thing and still have time if you do it in a way that makes sense, that protects your time, which is also really important. So I'd love to hear from you. Do you consider yourself a multi-passionate entrepreneur? And tell me in the chat if you do. So here, here's some ways you'll know if you are a multi-passionate entrepreneur. You're driven by possibility, like possibility lights you up. You have lots of ideas, right? And decision making might be hard. So sometimes you don't know where to focus and you spread your energy across too many areas and then you don't see the results you've hoped for. Let me know if this is you. And you aren't sure how to package your products and services in a way that makes sense to you and to others. This is a really big one. So let me pause here. I'd love to hear from you, you know, is this hard? Because I know this was really hard for me. And I talked to a lot of people, a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs who just can't, they're not sure how to pull it together. Right. You're getting a lot of yeses in a the lot comments. Of yeses. A lot of people are wholeheartedly agreeing okay. uh, with everything you've shared so far. Okay. Awesome. So then you guys are in the right place. Um, so too many ideas makes you feel excited and then overwhelmed. Can you relate to that? And you experience what I call brain fog. Let's see if I talk about what brain fog is. Um, let me tell you what brain fog is. Basically, it's like when you have so many ideas and they're just spinning in your head. And if you can't get them out in some way, you feel like it's more than it actually is. And, and it gets foggy and it just makes it hard to make decisions. So let me know if you experience brain fog. I know I do. So yeah. again, yeah. One comment. Um, uh, this one, this one, I have niched down and I'm now at the point where I need to start opening up my business to the rest of who I am. And I have no idea how to do that elegantly. Mm. And then another comment, the appearance of Jack of all trades, master of none question mark. Mm. Yes. Jack of all trades, master of none. So we're going to get into that a little bit because I do think there's um, a time and a place for like specialists. Right. Um, but then there's also a need in the market for more holistic people who are more generalist. And I would consider myself more of a generalist. Like I'm a, a lifestyle and business coach. I write home decor books. I, I'm interested in marketing, but I, but I can help people with lots of different things. So I'm like a little bit of an expert in a lot of things, but I'm not like a super duper expert in one thing. So um, I think that's really personal. Like you have to look at what you have to offer and how far you want to go with that, right? So before we go on, I would love for you to take a screenshot at some point in this presentation. And if you're on Instagram, share it and tag me, tag me, Deshay Peacock, 
and Vermont Collaborative Circle. Here you see it's VT Collaborative Circle. Tag us and I'll send you a special bonus for doing that for us. And I'll definitely repost it as well. Just want to throw that out there. A little marketing, right? Um, so let's jump into the message of the day. It's that we, that, well, the message of the day is that we need to niche down, right? We've been talking about this. We're told we have to choose just one thing and focus on that. And here is the truth. It is easier. <laughs> it is easier. Um, it's easier to market one thing. It's easier to have one Instagram account and one website that's sh just strictly talking to one person. Um, but some of us just can't, we just can't do that. It's just not part of who we are. Um, so let's talk a little bit briefly about why it's okay not to niche. So I just hinted at this before, but really not everyone needs a specialist. Can I get an amen? Have, think about it in your, in your life or in your business. If you've gone to someone who is a specialist, but then like you need a little bit of help outside of that specialty and they can't help you and how that feels. So, but then again, like I said in the beginning, sometimes you do need a specialist and you want a specialist and there, there's a time and place for a specialist, right? Like a brain surgeon, for example, like I don't want my brain surgeon also to be like an expert in wallpaper design, <laughs> you know, like I'm like, okay, this is, I need you just to just to do this one thing. This is really important, right? Um, and like in my business, I've definitely hired specialists. So for example, like when I hired my website designer, she was focused on website design for female entrepreneurs, right? That's very nice. Niche. And my Facebook ad expert, also very niche in that particular field. So even though like Facebook ad expert, that's pretty niche. I even chose somebody who knew the algorithm and knew the tag words specifically for my, my, my niche, right? Of working with female entrepreneurs, creative female entrepreneurs. But sometimes you just need a more holistic approach. Now think about this again. I'd love to hear examples. And I'll give you one example and then we'll move on. So I did have a client one time who, told, well, this was a potential client and I was talking to her, I was doing a free clarity call and she was telling me that she had hired a coach to help her build a sales funnel, right? And along the way, she started to question whether it was the right offer. And then she said that she was explaining this to the coach and the coach said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. You need a clarity coach for that problem. And so then she was stuck. And, you know, then that's why she would call, she had called me to try to see if I could help her with that. And I'm like, wow, your, your, your like sales funnel coach couldn't help you get clarity on your sales funnel. You need a clarity coach. So, you know, I hear those kinds of things more and more and more. And it's kind of like, wow, people are getting so niche that they're actually not even help. They're not helping as much as they told as they could. Right. Have you guys experienced that? I'd love to know. Okay, so what can you do about this problem? You're interested in more than one thing and what are you gonna do? So this is how I've done it, okay? I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but this is my solution is I created an umbrella brand. So what is that? Basically, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's very simple. It's just the ability to create multiple streams of income under one brand mission, serving one type of client. So, and there's really only two things you need for an umbrella brand. So this is where you might wanna just grab a piece of paper and a pen and just jot these two things down. You need, thing one is you need to create a brand mission. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. My business helps entrepreneurs make money doing work they love. That is my brand mission. And where that brand mission came from, it actually came from my own personal struggle, right? I struggled trying to make money doing what I loved. Um, and I figured out how to do it. And now I help people do that. Okay. And, and also because it's a value of mine, it's really, really important to me. Um, that I'm doing work that I love. Not everybody cares. Not everybody cares about doing work they love. Some people are fine just to go and like make a paycheck and come home and then they have their hobbies that give them joy. For me, the the joy like needs to come from my work. It, the, the work and my life, they're just intertwined in a very big way. So if I'm so intertwined with, intertwined with my work, it's important for me to feel good about it. So that's why, that's where my brand mission comes from. And you can think about for yourself, like what is the brand mission behind my business? And then this is the only other thing. Thing number two is define your ideal client. And this one's really important. 
Okay, so here's another example. Here's mine. Uh, you'll notice that there's a bunch of adjectives here. Smart, creative, ambitious, female entrepreneur who wants to make money doing work that she loves. She's interested in personal development. She likes to travel and she values beautiful spaces and places. And so notice that I didn't say <laughs> if she's married, if she has kids, how old she is, if she drinks tea, coffee or juice, what magazine she reads or what Netflix show she reads. I, I can't tell you how many marketing classes I've taken and they're like, okay, fill out this 30 page form of who your ideal client is. And I'm like, I don't freaking know what magazine she's reading. I don't know what Netflix show she likes. Like, and when I look at who I work with, they are so diverse. You know, I have had clients in their 20s and I've had clients in their 60s. I've had, I have clients who are married. I have clients who aren't married. I have clients with kids and clients without kids. If I was to follow that advice in the beginning and narrow it down so much to this one person, which is, this is what we're told, I would, would I have all these clients that I have? No, because my clients don't fit into that narrow, narrow, narrow box. What they do fit into are the other things that I just described, that they, they're they interested in making money, doing work they love, and all that other stuff I described. Okay, so once you have your ideal client pegged, then here's the fun part. And so you might be thinking like, okay, Dusha, you said that like this isn't about niching and you just told me like two places to niche, right? Niche in your brand message and niche in your ideal client. Well, here's where you get to break free and create multiple streams of income. So here are mine, right? So I do one-to-one -one coaching, masterminds, digital programs, retreats, books, affiliate marketing, brand partnerships. And, you know, the books, the home decor books, that's the one, like, if you're thinking about an umbrella brand, like, it's getting a little wet over here in the book category. <laughs> you know, so the books are not directly for female entrepreneurs, but they are for women who value beautiful places and spaces. And notice that I did incorporate that into my brand mission. So it, it, it's a teeny bit outside of the umbrella, but it still works. And there are some people who follow me and who purchase my book who aren't going to ever buy coaching from me because they're not in business. But I would say probably 95% of the people who coach with me have my book because they're, they are interested in the home decor piece. They're interested in creating a beautiful office space that helps them be more productive and that kind of thing. So that's how, you know, sometimes you can go a teeny bit outside of your, of your umbrella, but, but not too much, right? Okay, so let me give you some examples because I think the best way to understand this is through examples. And I just gave you an example of, my, of myself, but let me give you some other examples. So here we have um, Ashley Ezak, and um, she's an Instagram friend. And I love hers because she's just, she's just so clear in her brand message. So let me just, let me just read it. So I'm a multi-passionate designer who believes that good design makes better life embraces good and embraces energy and looks damn good. Okay. So, so take a look at how she's worded that because, you know, a lot of it is in communicating your brand message. And then she says, I design kitchens, baths, coffee shops, vacation rentals, and brands, brand development, website, e-commerce, social, and I share pictures and words here. Okay. So can you pick out Ashley's brand message? Let me slow down. I get excited. <laughs> Tell me in the chat, can you pick out her brand message and who is her ideal client? Any, uh, any feedback there, Karin? Not yet in the chat. Oh, here okay. we go. Anyone okay. needing help with, in the design realm? design round. Yes. Anything else? I, I would offer people who are looking to um, match their space and their energy to, to draw energy from their space. Yes. Yes. So if we skip back, let me just help you guys out here a little bit. Right. So we skip back, like what is her brand message? Like her brand message is good design and a better life right? And her ideal client is someone who values beautiful design. And then it branches out there a little bit, you know, so she, she does have clients who 
are interested in um, interiors and then clients who are interested in um, brand development. But I'm guessing that like my client who might also have my book and hire me, they're probably the same. They're probably the same ideal client. They're probably, she probably, and actually I know that she does because I follow her. A lot of her website design, their interior, just other interior designers, right? Like if you were an interior designer and you saw that someone did design at like website design and interior design, like wouldn't you want to hire that person? So it's kind of funny because it's like in a way by, by spreading out and doing two things, she's almost like making it a niche, right? Which is the funny thing about it, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, Karin? I, I hear you clearly. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's keep going. So here's another one, Holly Becker. Um, so I just took this straight from her site. I think it's kind of cool to like take it right from the site so we can see how they're describing themselves. So she says, Hey, I'm Holly Becker. I'm the founder and editor of Decorate. I'm an interior design expert, author, journalist, online educator, moderator, mom, and expat from Boston based in Germany. And then her streams of income, books, e-courses, magazines. She has her own magazine, public speaking, designing products, design consultant. So again, like if I was to ask you, well, first of all, like what is her brand? Her brand is Decorate. So I get asked a lot, like, do I need to have my umbrella brand be my name or something else? So like, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, I don't want you to get caught up in that. But, you know, for me, it's sweet spot style. That's my overall brand. And then for Holly's, it's Decorate. But we both have lifestyle brands. So we're very much still a part of our brand, right? But look at all the different stuff she does and like what pulls all of this together. Well, again, it's design, but she's doing lots of different things and she's, and she's working with the same type of client, which is somebody interested in design. But interestingly enough, Holly Becker, she, you know, she calls herself a design interior design expert. She's not really an interior designer. She's not going in and doing designs for people, but she's created a career around interior design where she's able to do lots of different things. Okay. Okay. So I have another example outside of design and decor because, you know, of course that's who I'm around all the time, but um, I want to give you an example outside of design and decor in just a second. Um, and Alex, I think you're here. This is going to, this is going to be for you. Um, but first let's talk about this. Will an umbrella brand work for you? So again, I think if you can answer these two questions, it's going to help you know, if you can have an umbrella brand, like, do you have one core brand message? Maybe you need to work on it. Um, and do you serve one type of client? or one type of client that's pulled together by one thing, like we saw with Ashley. I mean, she, she has one type of client that's in design, but again, there's interior and then there's um, the home, but they're kind of still one as we talked about. Okay, so I know that this can be like, this can be hard to figure out on your own sometimes, like hopefully you're getting some clarity now just by these examples. But if you want to talk about it, like I'm the type of person who I process everything through talking about it. So I love to talk with people who understand this. If you're that type of person, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm kind of, I'm close, but I need, I love your like one-on-one -on -one attention. I just want to offer this out that, um, I'm going to do a free 20 minute grow your brand consult here for you guys, if you're interested and, you know, we'll hash it out real quick and we'll see, like, we'll look at your brand message and we'll identify your ideal client. We'll see if an umbrella brand will work for you. And I love this picture. This is from one of my retreats. This is my client, Mishi, <laughs> because you don't belong in a box. If you're the type of person who's like, no, I really need like, I really, this is my personality. I need to do more than one thing. I need to grow. I need to be able to scale in lots of different ways. Please help me. Then um, this is for you. Okay. So jot this down, sweetspotstyle.com backslash book dash a dash call. And that's where you can find that 20 minute link to book with me and get on my calendar. Or if you don't want to write all that stuff down, or you're on the phone, you're in the car, whatever, 
just send me a DM on Instagram, just Deshay Peacock on Instagram. All right. Okay. So let's jump right in here to this last example, and then we're going to open it up for questions. So Alex, is Alex here? She hey, Alex. is. Hey, Alex. Awesome. So I jotted down this um, note from you, but if you want to unmute yourself and just kind of explain it, that'd, that'd be even better. Yeah, absolutely. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Um, I don't usually get nervous doing stuff like this, but like, I feel like my hand's shaking right now. And I think it's because <laughs> this has for so long felt like something that's just like looming as the thing I know I want to do and doesn't feel super possible. And I feel so nervous right now. So that's a fascinating mm. thing, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, so my business, you know, that I've niched down kind of farther than I ever imagined I could. Um, I make marshmallows. I only make marshmallow, marshmallow company. Um, every time someone asks me, like, if I'm going to make any other desserts, I say no, because mm -hmm. this part of business is just marshmallows, but I am a hell of a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. And my grand vision was always, okay, I'm going to start with marshmallows. I'm going to start, you know, just like I've never had a business before. I don't really know. I didn't know what I was doing three years ago. Um, I didn't even know if I was going to fall in love with it. I did. And it was almost like starting the business made me realize how much more I feel like Nomadic Kitchen can be. So mm -hmm. Marshmallow is definitely like this thing's home, mm -hmm. but I'm like on my website, I describe myself as a multi-passionate doer, a nurturing rule breaker, a crier, and a classically trained chef. Mm -hmm. um, I see myself as a writer. I see myself as a community coordinator. And I've always kind of imagined, all right, I'm going to spend three-ish years getting marshmallows to the point that they can stand on their own, at which point I'm going to start my cookbook career once that's kind of in place. I will have, you know, bought a whole bunch of land and created a homestead in Vermont. And that's when I can start kind of inviting people to my home and become like this Vermont culinary entrepreneur, this trusted voice and presence in the culinary community. Um, and I think two of the problems that I have are that nomadic kitchen feels like it makes a lot of sense for the grand picture. And then as this niche that I've developed, this marshmallow thing kind of becomes more of its own thing. It's like, you know, people don't look at Nomadic Kitchen and think that's a marshmallow company. So mm. it's almost like I unwittingly started this business with the idea of being able to have it be something that opens up to much more than it is. Mm -hmm. And now suddenly it just feels like there's this disconnect between what I've built and what I want to build with what I want to build and it just feels so messy and I have no idea how to do it in a way that makes sense to anyone outside of myself. Well, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing um, that story. And I think, you know, it, it's interesting because sometimes you just need an outside perspective. Like for me looking in, even when you wrote this and I read it, it was just so clear to me, like, why not just have an umbrella brand, brand that's Nomadic Kitchen and Marshmallows is under it? You know, like marshmallows can still be big, but Nomadic Kitchen can be even bigger if you want it to be. If you want to be big, then Nomadic Kitchen can still be like the overarching thing. And mar it's not doesn't have to take away from marshmallows. Marshmallows can still grow and they can be big and giant. But then you can have all this other stuff that you want. You can have your cookbooks and you can have your culinary experiences. So I, def I definitely think that you could create this umbrella brand. And I think that what might feel messy is probably just how you explain it and what your online presence is, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I do feel a little bit lucky in that way, in like the way I've built my social media in particular, mm -hmm. like I have basically built it so that it's just me, you know, it's not just the product I'm showing up, it's yes. the whole bar, and that does make it a lot easier, um, I think, to be like, okay, because this is me and I'm a human being, just like the rest of you who's constantly changing and constantly growing, it feels like I've almost built in a little bit of like buffer for this mm -hmm. to be whatever I want at any given moment. Um, it just feels weird because I have niched down so damn hard. <laughs> yeah, I totally think that you can expand from here. And I think that was really smart 
or intuitive of you to incorporate your your own, you know, the lifestyle brand of you, Alex, into the marshmallows. And that's what attracted me to to the marshmallows, to be honest with you. Like I saw you and I met you through, you know, Karn in this community and I and I checked out your page and I saw your cute face and like I was like, oh, this is like a cute brand. Like who is this person? You know, it wasn't like for me personally, and this is just my point of entry, it wasn't like, oh, I need a marshmallow. It was more, it was more about like being intrigued about you. And now I know your brand, right? So I think that that's cool. It, you know, it's like, we always have to look at how, how much we want to be part of a brand. And for me, like, I'm totally part of my brand, like hundred percent part of my brand. Um, and for you, I think that you're definitely right now part of your brand so the question is how much do you want to continue that um mm -hmm. let let me just show you i pulled up a couple of examples that might be helpful Maybe. so matthew kenny do you are you familiar with him i know his name so jessica i think jessica oh, yeah. weston is here as well and i'm going to show you her example next because she's in vermont but i wanted to start with somebody really big who's like international and all like TV show. I think he has a TV show. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Well, here's, here's the deal. So let me just read to you. Matthew Kenny is an American celebrity chef, entrepreneur, author, and educator specializing in plant-based cuisine. He's the author of 12 cookbooks, founder of a dozen vegan restaurants, founder of companies, the companies, Matthew Kenny Cuisine and Matthew Kenny Culinary, a plant-based diet education business. So, you know, he's got books, he's got restaurants, he's got an education business. Um, so I would encourage you, like, here's a multi-passionate dude doing a lot of stuff under the brand Matthew Kinney. And if we were to ask, like, okay, well, what is his brand mission? I think it's around this, right? Plant-based cuisine. So the plant-based cuisine, when, when you're thinking about an expert, it's like, oh, who do you go to? Well, if you want plant-based plant cuisine, you might go to him. That's how he's branded himself. That's what pulls all the stuff together right? Um, so I would take a look at his website and his website is Matthew Kinney. And then you can see on the side, this is cut off a little bit, but you can see some of the different right. tabs. So you can kind of see how people who are doing a lot of different things in your world, like how they're organizing it on their okay. website, which to me, if you can figure out how to organize on your website, like <laughs> you're cool, you know, like that's it. That's like you won the game, right? There's a great comment here from Anne who says, Alex, I don't think it's a big leap at all. I can totally see pics of your beautiful marshmallows alongside your Vermont home farm uh, that you hope for and your cookbooks. Um, and I would just add that you you maybe are, are underselling the fact that you're classic, a classically trained chef with an MBA. So yeah. you have all of the skills to support this vision coming together. And and I'm just excited to see, I totally see where you're going with it. And I'm excited to follow you on your journey. Thank you, Karen. It's really yeah, nice yeah. out for the first time and not have the reaction. You know, there's definitely part of my head that's like, everyone's going to call you crazy. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wait, you guys just see it. Okay, great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think like we all see it loud and clear. Super, super, super duper. See that for you. Let me give you one more example, and then I'm going to take this off screen share. Um, so this is Jessica Westnight. I think she's here. If you're here, hi, Jess. And she is the, she, so she's in Vermont. I wanted to show you kind of like an international superstar and a local superstar here. So this is Jess. She's in, she has a cafe in Brattleboro, Super Fresh Organic Cafe. She's also an author. She's also a certified holistic health coach. She's a doTERRA wellness advocate. She teaches private and group classes and more. And also her focus is on plant-based. So again, it's like, you know, that's what pulls her brand mission together and she's gluten and dairy free. So um, here, I'm going to stop the share now. And I, oh good, now I can see you guys. So, um, you know, check out Jessica's website. So Jessica has two websites. She has this, can you guys see me now? Yeah, okay, cool. So she has, you know, her Super Fresh Cafe website and then she has Jessica Jean Webs, uh, Jessica Jean Weston. And Jessica Jean Weston, it, it is kind of two brands right now, but where she's moving is, more Jessica Jean Weston. So I wanted to show hers so that you could see how, you know, things can, as we say, pivot and thrive, you know, like you can start off one way and shift to another way. So Jessica, you know, as having a physical location in Brattleboro, um, 
a lot of us know Jessica from her restaurant. So she's created a separate website where she has her cookbooks and her cooking classes and all that. Eventually, maybe, you know, and they're linked though. That's, that's the thing, right? If you go to one, you can find the other. So this is another way um, that you can have several websites, but your umbrella brand is like the main website. You know, when you're doing a podcast or you're in a magazine, like it goes to your main umbrella brand website, but you can have multiple websites that or sales pages that branch off from these and they're still all housed there. But for example, if you were, you know, doing something and let's use Alex strictly for marshmallows and you have a website and your URL embedded in that umbrella brand website and you're like, this person is coming to you because they are just really looking for marshmallows. I mean, you just send them that website, that URL, not the website, but that URL that looks like it's on website. Is this making sense? Awesome, okay. So good, we have, so I talk really fast, sorry about that. But now we have time to like talk, which is really what I wanted to do. So Alex, are you envisioning this now? You can take yourself off mute. Mm -hmm. What was the question? Are you kind of seeing how this could be online for you? Like, what are you thinking? It feels a lot less nebulous. Um, I feel like the main question in my head is, it, I, it feels very aligned and very true that the whole thing is Nomadic Kitchen and that like I am Nomadic Kitchen. I think the question is like, if I do have kind of this very niche part of Nomadic Kitchen, the marshmallows, one thing that's been happening basically since month three of my business is that people have started calling me the marshmallow girl. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they did that, I was like, that's so much better. <laughs> I was like, for this, that's so Yeah. There's part of me that like just like change my name at the farmer's market. So the moment you look at my tent, you know what's in it. And I think that's the main, because what I'm seeing with a lot of the examples that you've outlined is like, you know, there's one name and then it's just like, under this one name, here's all the stuff that I do. So I think the main thing that still feels like a bit of a block is this idea of potentially having like two names at play because it does feel like Nomadic Kitchen encapsulates the whole thing but doesn't encapsulate this one piece of it. Mm -hmm. I still think that it would be good to have Nomadic Kitchen as the big one and the Marshmallow Girl is like, a whole website that's tagged under your like brand and it can still say the marshmallow okay. girl you know um because you can be nomadic kitchen founder of the you know founder of the marshmallow well it's wait it wouldn't be founder of the marshmallow girl really. it's the marshmallow girl like for founder of nomadic kitchen maybe by nomadic that's how yeah 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 because yeah Marshmallow Girl from Nomadic Kitchen or by Nomadic Kitchen, kind of like as a transition, if I am mm -hmm. going to start like with it all while it all also keeping it all kind of as its own entities that make sense on their own. Okay. Yeah. And That's I the would, part that feels the scary. Yeah. So you could be, you could start off because people know you as the Marshmallow Girl now or, or for marshmallows, you could be like the Marshmallow Girl, you know, founder of Nomadic Kitchen. And then you could, as Nomadic Kitchen grows in visibility, then you can just switch the title around. But I do think that if you were to go full on out right now and put all your energy into being the Marshmallow Girl, you will niche yourself out of a bunch of other things that I, yeah. I think that are important to you. I'm sensing are important to you. Is this true? Yeah, I think that's super. And that just feels like the line I'm trying to figure out how to tow. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you're making me believe that it is possible. And probably the biggest hurdle is just getting my mind around the idea that it is. And as soon as I truly believe it, I think a whole lot of opportunity is going to open up. Yeah. I think the way that we see things are possible is by seeing other people doing them. So I yeah. would encourage you, even though I know you're busy, your busy girl is to set a little time aside and just start Googling, like even in your niche, but in other people's niches as well, just to see um, how other people are doing it and see if you can find a business model that makes sense to you. And especially mm -hmm. seeing how they organize it online and on Instagram. Um, 
as well as on their website, because there's probably lots, there's lots of different um, formulas for this, right? So I gave you two or three, but you know, I gave you two in, in your area and a couple in the design areas and, and they're all a tiny bit different. And Jessica just messaged, Jessica, you can pop on. I'd love to hear from you. Like as you're transitioning in this, in this area, you have two websites and you have two Instagrams. What, what are you seeing is um, like a challenge with that or where are you headed? I mean, the challenge is being one person and creating all the content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's like one of the biggest challenges, but I'm, I'm getting better at that and trying to hire out some help and delegate a little more because like my restaurant has a team of people who work in the kitchen, but then like my, my bigger brands that I'm really trying to put more focus and energy into is just me. So I'm working on shifting that this year is one of my big goals is to have a little like one or two people helping me with content creation and admin stuff in terms of challenges. And I started with super fresh, although we all, I always had like the bigger vision was always there just like in this scenario, but I started with a brick and mortar and like a restaurant kind of has to have a website, you know, and Instagram and Facebook. So that's how I started. And I would find myself um, sometimes in the mirror, you have to much. I would find myself sometimes um, posting photos of like food I was making at home and people would be like, oh, can I get, is that the special at Superfresh? And I was like, oh shoot, I can't post anything that's not like available at Superfresh on Superfresh's page. Or I wanted to share other like holistic health wellness things. Um, and when my cookbook came out in 2017, that's when I really was like, I have to have a website for my Jessica Jean Weston for people to get the cookbook, to learn more about me, and I do other things. I do teach events and travel and cooking classes beyond. So this past year, I've been like starting to do even more of that with private classes and recipe blog. That's not necessarily like they're linked, but they're different. So I can, that gives me permission. Like I, I think of it as like looking at the longer term scalability too, and figuring out like what baby steps you have to take now, but also knowing that you can grow into it. Like if you wanted the marshmallow girl to be something like Tavernier chocolates, <laughs> Tavernier, I never say it right. I'm sorry. Um, Tavernier, I don't know. <laughs> um, Tavernier. Tavernier, yeah, whatever. Um, or like my friend's company, Emmy's Organics that I was working at the farmer's market a decade ago in Ithaca, New York. Um, and now they're in Whole Foods, Costco, Wegmans, have a co-packing facility in California, Starbucks, they're everywhere. And, you know, that has to have its own page that has to have its own Instagram that has to have its own thing. But one of the founders, Samantha, is a good friend of mine, and she has her own website. She's been building her Instagram page because she also does now like business trainings for women and other things that are broader. I mean, it's a little, that's a little bit of a different scenario, but I think you could start with one and expand. Um, but if you, I, I feel limited if I only had super fresh to be posting on, like Deshay said, I, I'm like, I want to share about like wild foods that might not be on the menu at super fresh right away that I'm like, or like my Insta stories that are different explorations of health and wellness or just life you know, yeah, I don't know and I if that think, just got confusing or helped at all. <laughs> well, I think that it's good. One thing that you brought up is like easing into it, you know? So the thing, the thing is that you kind of have, I think it's really good that you're thinking this through, you know, because it's like, you don't want to just, you know, start, you know, with lots of different Instagram accounts and websites. And then all of a sudden realize like you can't manage all the content. That was the first thing Jessica said. It was like, it's a lot of content, you know, with two, Jessica has two Instagrams. Dar, you have a personal Instagram and you have a business Instagram. I have one Instagram and Lord help me. Like, I can't even imagine having a second one or even a third, like some people do. Like it is just enough for me to barely handle <laughs> the one account because now they're telling you, you need to do 10 different things every day. Like you need to do reels and lives and you need, you know, like you need to post and just Instagram can be so overwhelming and confusing. 
So you need to think about that as well. Like, is there, for me, I'm like, whatever has to happen, it's got to be on this one website for me personally, it has to be in one Instagram because I'm off doing a million other things to add in like two layers of everything would absolutely not work for me. I'm a solopreneur though. Okay. And I love being a solopreneur because I'm, I'm not really, okay. Emily, who's also in this community and not on this call, Emily Ile is, she's all about hiring, right? So I'm trying to change my mindset around hiring and getting help, which then maybe I could expand. I want to expand and I'm going to need help, but think about your life. And if you want to have multiple different things and multiple different, almost brands, like if you wanted to have two, this is for everybody, by the way, like if you wanted to, if you end up needing two websites and two Instagrams, you're going to need help. And do you want to be a boss to someone? Do you want to work with consultants or do you want to hire a full-time person? Like that's the direction you're heading when you go that way. So think about it now. Think about it while you're at this place and think about where it is you want to be, how you're going to get there. And then you can kind of decide the base of where you're headed, right? The base is your, for me, it's your umbrella brand, you know? And then if you have more things to manage, then you're just going to need help. You're going to need more people to help you with, with that. Right. Hey, Deshay. Um, yeah. so on that, I, I personally, I mean, I think you should just do whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, I'm, but from my personal experience, I feel like it probably makes the most sense, especially as you're starting out as one person to focus on if you're going to have a website or a page, the website could, could be like, no, you know, like Marsh, the marshmallow girl by nomadic kitchen. So you're starting to leak that name. You're starting to leak that brand. Um, but have, I feel like I would focus on like, like what I did with super fresh is like, this is my focus. This is my brick and mortar. And I'm only have an Instagram and a website for that. And you get into a flow and you build that audience. And obviously we're always building the audience and tweaking things, but then you can like focus on like what, what is bringing in your primary source of income too. Am I thinking of Deshay telling me like in income generating tasks? Cause I don't often think about that. I just think about what I want to do and I don't focus on the money and I'm trying to change that. Um, and then you can add that, you know, like where, where does your, where's your primary source of income coming from? And you can still have ways to leak it in and build. And then like, maybe when your first cookbook comes out or when you start to do other things, maybe you even have like a separate personal Instagram that you just, you don't put as much time and energy. You don't like, if you don't post for a couple of weeks, it's not a big deal. If you're just putting some fun stories, you know, that you can have that outlet, but it's not the pressure of trying to build it like the marshmallow girl. Yeah. And, you know, I love the idea of thinking in seasons, especially for big projects. So like, you know, when I got my first book deal, it was like, okay, like to do this this year, like make as, make as little money as I can get by and write this book, you know, and it wasn't like write this book, lead a retreat, um, start my new like digital program. It's kind of like a book like what you want to do Alex like writing a book or books and leading retreats and culinary experiences those are big things so it's kind of like start to chunk them out in seasons so it's like kind of one big thing at a time and before you know it you'll look back and you'll be like I have all this stuff and it all makes a lot of money and I love all of it and I would never give up any of it you know and you'll be able to do it all you know like I've been doing this this is like my seventh year um, so I've had some time to accumulate some titles and to also pivot and shift. And, you know, one thing that I'm happy that I did in the very beginning was to create Sweet Spot Style under Brand Mission so that I can change quite a bit. And, you know, even under one of the titles of coach, even just that one title, um, business, small business coach, I do like 20 different things under that title, you know, and I could pull and do, I could niche down in any of them if I really, really wanted to. In fact, I kind of played with it last year where I pulled out, you know, I mean, help people with Instagram, with email, with brand messaging, with websites, with, you know, mindset, all the stuff. And I pulled out email marketing because I was like, I just want something really specific. And like, 
I'll teach you something and you'll tell me how many people got on your email list because sometimes mine gets very subjective, you know, with mindset, especially. So, you know, I did that for a year. I did a mastermind with it and then I didn't, I closed down the mastermind and did an e-course with it. And now it's a bonus to the, to the um, coaching thing. Um, and it's kind of like, I'm not really focusing on it at the moment. I could pull it back if I wanted to, but that's the beauty of like coming back to that idea of that expansiveness of having the freedom, which, you know, is freedom, your value. It is mine, the freedom to kind of be like, here's the thing. And you know what, right now, I kind of want to lean in here and now I want to pull back here and I'm going to do this. And that's what an umbrella brand allows you to do. I love that you talked about seasonality and picking one thing to focus on because we're talking about an umbrella brand, but mm-hmm. within that you can still have a, you know, you can, you can specialize your attention on a project or t- you can have something that sustains you financially and that yes. excites you in your passions. And so you can kind of, you be, can be working on multiple elements um, at a time, yeah. but um, also continuing that, the fulfillment of your business with you, what you know works. I'd love if you could um, talk about kind of the proportionality of the umbrella. How do you know what the right um, dimensions are for the different elements on it and how to prioritize your attention to su- support your sustainability and growth at the same time? That is a really good question. So I think it's like, you know, Um, I talked to an an aspiring entrepreneur the other day and she was like, "Um, I want to start a university and I want to build a restaurant and I do people's taxes and I write eBooks. Can I have an umbrella brand? And I'm like, no, (laughs) no. Like the restaurant is a thing and a university is a thing and taxes are a thing and eBooks are a thing. Now maybe you could write eBooks about any one of those three subjects and you could combine the two. So obviously like, you can, you kind of needs to make sense to the general public. And sometimes you can finagle it like I have with like, oh, you're a small business coach, but you write interior books. Like I could make them very separate, but I'm kind of squishing them in through my brand message, right? So you can squish them into a certain degree if there's two things that seem a little bit different, but the further they are away, the harder it's going to get right? The harder it's going to get. So you do want to try to, you know, make your things make sense under your message and not just to you, but to other people, (laughs) other people have to understand, right? And, you know, start with a couple of things and then you can add in. So I think multiple streams of income, I think we're seeing with COVID are super important. You know, like last year I lost 20 to 40% of my revenue from retreats. Retreats were just gone, right? In a split second, they were just gone. And that was a big chunk of income. But luckily I was doing one-to-one coaching. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be all right. And I just shifted my focus into the one-to-one coaching. And oddly enough, I made more money in 2020 and I'm making way more money in 2021. So, you know, I think that having multiple streams of income can be a safeguard for when, for when things get shaken up. And what if like the internet disappeared? Oh my gosh, well, I'd be in a big, big trouble, but like, at least I could go hawk my books at like on the corner or something. Like I have something else I could sell. Like I could still like call Dar and Jessica and Karen and be like, Hey, you guys want to go on a mini retreat? Let's do a workshop. You know, like there would be ways for me to figure it out without going broke for very long, right? So to answer your question, Karen, like how do you know how big this umbrella brand is? Like it, as long as you have those two core things, it can be small, but it has the ability to grow and it can grow as big as you want it to. And that's where you get to decide, you know, how big do I want this to go? I want mine to be very big as long as I can maintain my freedom of my time and flexibility, right? And that's where I'm at in this transition for myself of going from a solopreneur to possibly expanding a team, right? Um, And if I can expand the team in a way that makes me feel the way I wanna feel, I can, I know I can, because I created that core umbrella brand to fit all the different things, right? Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay, I know we're uh, probably out of time. Is there any very last minute questions? Don't forget, you can also go and book that call with me if you need extra help. 
And don't forget to tag us and share on Instagram if you found this helpful. Do we have any last minute questions? Otherwise, I'll, I'll hand it over to Karin to close. Sure, sure. Well, feel free to reach out to either of us um, through social media or website. It's really a pleasure and a privilege to connect with you. I know that your time is precious. And um, so, Deshay, thank you for sharing your time and talents with us today. I think um, we're all looking at our own brands differently and thinking about how we can create expansive growth um, and connection through what it is that we offer and how we might reinvent what we offer to inspire creativity and keep ourselves um, inspired and excited by what we do. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to come together and have these learning experiences and connect with people. And um, today, I'm just especially excited to see how people in, in the chat and in the audience are able to connect. We have a few Pivot and Thrive community members who are here in the call and who were um, able to share a little bit about their business growth. And um, we love doing that. We love creating authentic conversation spaces so that people can learn about their own business, connect with other people who inspire them and grow and create scalable growth opportunities to support small businesses. Um, so thank you so much for continuing the conversation and, and inspiring us in, in this topic. Um, coming up next week, we have a wellness fair. We have more than 20 community members who are coming together, collaborating and offering services. Um, I'm going to drop the link in the chat so you can check it out. But um, it's just $49 for two weeks, um, more than 20 events and hundreds of dollars of promo codes and special access offers that um, the community has offered uh, their time and generously their talents. And our hope is that people will find small ways that they can invite change into their life to increase their experience of wellness. And we feel like investing in your well-being has never been more important. Um, and this has been a really trying year for a number of reasons. Um, and we hope that people take the opportunity and, and invest in themselves and their well-being in this small way, but also in a way that inspires change and possibility and helps them connect with practitioners around the state who can help you um, to grow. And it's all offered online. So it doesn't matter where you are located. You, you can um, hop online and attend any of the events uh, virtually. So I hope to check it out. Um, and thank you so much really for the opportunity to, um, to connect with you today, Deshay. It's always fun to work with you. And I hope that folks will reach out to you uh, for that coaching call and um, walk away with an, an idea of how your umbrella uh, can, can cover all of your passions and support joy and, and your growth in your business. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. All right. Take care, everyone. It's been a pleasure.